Hey everybody and welcome back to part two now of this mini series on designing and building a chat app with uh, Socket.io. In this video we're going to go ahead and start diving into the code. In the previous example we took a look at uh, design and sketch and we talked a little bit uh, really quickly, really high level about design concepts, some basic ones. And now we're going to go ahead and start implementing that design. So what I've got here is I'm, I'm in Visual Studio Code, which if you're not using, I highly recommend it as a text editor for web development. It's great. Tons of people are using it. It's got lots of features, and it really is just awesome. So I hope you guys, uh, if you're not using it, take a look at it and consider it at some point. Uh, and what I've got here are three files, my app.js, CSS, and my index.html. And I've got my HTML5, basically boilerplate here with the title of Quick Chat. And then I've linked in my CSS and my JavaScript files as well. And just to make sure my JavaScript was working in the console over here on the right, I've got, um, got the message coming out from hello from JS. Now I've gotten some feedback before on uh, my font size here in Visual Studio Code. So before I forget, let me, uh, let me go ahead and change that. So to change this, I'm gonna come into, uh, just for you guys to have awareness too, I'm gonna come into settings. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger here. There we go. And I'm going to change uh, this, this editor font size property from 12 to, let's say, 16. Uh, we should see that adjust here. Now my code should look a little bit bigger. So hopefully this is good for you guys to see uh, that are watching it at home on your computers. Um, just want to make sure I'm, I'm taking care of that before, before I forget because I will forget. So uh, what we're going to do first is in our HTML, we're just going to kind of lay out the structure of our application. We're going to break down sections for our header, for our main content, for our form, stuff like that. And then we're going to go into our CSS, and we're going to kind of lay the groundwork for the necessary CSS that we're going to use through the next couple of videos. So we're really going to create like resets and variables and really utility classes that are going to be used as we go forward. So let me actually get rid of this uh, prompt at the bottom. I don't need that right now. So, um, and, and lastly, one last thing. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm using the live server, so it's a plugin that you guys can uh, download in the extensions here. It's called... Uh, live server somewhere in here live server by ritwick day so you guys check that out if you're looking for something to kind of do an automatic reload once you guys are updating uh your files so the first thing we want to do is i'm going to create a header and inside of it i'm going to add a div now i'm going to use a uh, emmet syntax and emmet syntax is really these short codes that i can use uh, emmet abbreviations shortcuts that we can use to generate html so don't really worry if this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you. Just kind of after I do these snippets, you can copy what I have and follow along that way. But I highly recommend that you guys try and use these snippets uh, as you go forward. So what this is saying is, is I want a header tag, and then inside of that, I want its children to include a div. And then inside of that div, I want to include an h1 and a p tag. So I'm going to go ahead and tab that on out, and then I'll put quick chat as the h1. And then inside of, uh, inside of the p tag, the easiest way to get your message across. Like I said, basically as cheesy as I could get. Uh, so if I save this, we should see this refresh up here. And we don't have any styles right now, so this is just the base styles that are built in for h1s and, and p tags and stuff like that. So this is, this is basically going to be our header. Uh, we'll come back and update a little bit of that shortly. And then we want to have a div with an ID. So once I do this, uh, the hashtag here. For, for, us, for us millennials, uh, hashtag and then a name is going to be basically implicit div with an ID of something. So an ID of main content. Now it's implicit div because I could do something like this. I could do form with an ID of main content and it would do a form. But if you don't specify and you just kind of start with the hashtag, uh, it's going to be an implicit div. So after I tab this over, I should see a div uh, with an ID of main content. And this is where uh, we're going to have two different things. We're going to have a section for our login and then a section for our chat. So we're basically going to show and hide those things when, when appropriate. So when we load the application, show login, after login, hide login, and then show chat. That's what we're going to do. So each of these is going to be a section. So I'm going to have a section here with an ID here of login. So that would, I don't know why I'm typing ID, with an ID of login. Uh, and inside of that, I'm going to have an H2 and a form with an ID of login form. So you can see these, these image abbreviations are gonna get really, really helpful. And you can see uh, a little preview here of what it's gonna be. So let me go ahead and tab that out. Our H2 is gonna be get started, and then our form. Uh, we're gonna leave blank for now. I just wanna kinda stub this out to, to make sure that we, we see a form. Well, we're not actually gonna see it, but we see it in our HTML as a placeholder here. 
then we see our H2 for getting started. Uh, and then the next thing is going to be our section with an ID of chat, and inside of that, we're gonna have a div with an ID of messages list. Inside of that, uh, we're gonna start with just a dummy message, one message right is what we're gonna call it, and one message left. Uh, so I'm gonna do a div and a div, and go ahead and tab these out. And then at the bottom here, we're also going to have another form with an ID of message form. So we're gonna have two forms here. One is the login, and I don't need these actions. One is the login form, and then one is the, the message form. Both of them are just uh, single inputs and a, and a submit button, so there's nothing really complicated to it. So eventually, uh, these messages in here, let me go ahead and add a class of message to each of these. Eventually, these, uh, these message items are going to be uh, dynamically added in JavaScript and generated in, in JavaScript as uh, a message is received or a user sends out a message. So for now, we're just going to stub these out for testing. Uh, and what we're going to do, we're going to have one of these have a class of message write. And let me pull up, let's pull up the final example here. So let's look at the final example. I'll log in with James. And then notice here, when I type, uh, it's gonna be a message right, and then let's pull up another window again. So 3,000, and this will be John, and John says hi. So when someone else types, it's gonna go on the left. So these, for the most part, are gonna look basically the same, except uh, the background color is gonna be slightly different, and then we're gonna include the name here uh, when it's someone else sending us a message, because we already know our own name when we send messages to someone else. But when they send us a message, we'll include their name, and then uh, you basically obviously get uh, left alignment versus right alignment. So again, we're just stubbing this out here to say, hey, we're gonna play around with to test a message left and a message right. So we'll just save that basically as a pl placeholder for us to be able to work with when we start really styling this stuff. All right, so let's move over to our, uh, our CSS, and we're gonna start by doing, uh, let's see, some variables. And this is a relatively new feature in CSS uh, that can be really useful. It's been in SAS and, and stuff like that for a while if you guys have been doing that. Um, so it's kind of a, a cool thing that it's now included in CSS and it's, for the most part, looks pretty much like what you'd expect with a, a slightly different syntax. Anyway, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, select a root selector and then inside of that, we're gonna declare our uh, variables. So, and I'm actually, uh, just for the sake of time here, I'm gonna copy in the variables that I've got and I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you guys a, a few seconds here if you wanna try to type these in, uh, or you can just pause the video and go ahead and do it as well. But these are going to add up to uh, basically what we had in our sketch design from the video before. Let me pull that over for you guys for reference. Uh, this is going to uh, basically be these colors that we find here. All right, so let's come back over to uh, that one and we'll pull open the browser as well. Uh, so we've got a primary blue, a darker blue, a lighter blue, a white, a primary text, secondary text, and light gray. So these are the variables that we're going to use going forward. And then we're going to come in and do uh, something called resets. And, and what resets are, if you haven't used these before, is basically uh, different browsers have different, um, let's say, default values for certain things. And so to make sure that, that everything is consistent the way that we want, uh, we'll go ahead and do a reset. So we'll do a, a star, which is gonna apply to everything. And we're gonna say margin is gonna be zero, padding is gonna be zero, and then the box sizing is going to be border box. Now what box sizing border box means is let's say we define a square of 100 pixels by 100 pixels and then add padding of 20 pixels all the way around. This means that our box is actually going to render at 140 by 140. Uh, instead of 100 by 100 because you got the padding on top of top and bottom 20 pixels each That's 40 extra pixels in height and then 40 extra pixels in width from left to right as well So what border box does is when you define a width and height of something of let's say 100 by 100 and then padding Also, it includes the padding inside of that 100 pixels So now you'll have a hundred by hundred pixel box and then 20 pixels inside of that box on either side of padding Hopefully that makes sense. This uh, this is um, can be a tricky one, so if you guys want to spend a little time to look at what that actually means, uh, go ahead and do that. And then lastly, uh, I call this a reset. It really is just I, I, it's kind of a standardization. 
Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and set the font family to a Helvetica. Uh, Helvetica, and then a Sans, uh, Sans Serif. There we go. And then I'm going to set our color here, and I'm going to use a variable for the first time. So our color is going to be, we're going to say variable, and inside of the parentheses, we'll do the dash dash, and then start typing the name of our variable. And VS Code here is giving me some IntelliSense, so I want this to be the primary text color. And if we save this, we'll probably see the color here changes slightly and the font changes a little bit as well. The color change is a little hard to see. But notice that because of the, the resets, we don't have any margin and padding here, so it's going to be up to us to go ahead and do that. So the, the last section here I want to do is, let's say, helper functions. And a lot of this is going to be uh, centered around Flexbox. So we'll, we'll talk a lot about what Flexbox is when we're actually using it. But basically, Flexbox is this new, really cool, really super useful way to align things in your application. Uh, so I'm going to start with a flex class and then just do a display of flex. So this is going to basically define a flex container. And then I'm going to do a flex center class and justify content center and align items center. And what this does is it says... Uh, for a Flexbox container, you want to align things, justify content means on your primary axis, which is by default horizontal, you want to align things in the center. And then on the cross axis, which by default is vertical, you want to align things in the center as well. So basically, this is just defining something. Uh, if it has a flex class and then a flex center class, it's going to uh, be a flex container with everything uh, centered exactly in the center. So then we'll have a flex column, and these should make a little more sense as we're using them. Uh, this is going to be display flex, and then instead of using the flex direction, which by default is horizontal, uh, we're going to do a column here. Then we'll add a couple more, and again, this will make more sense as we go along. This one's going to be flex grow one, and this is basically going to say for an element inside of a flex container, have it take up as much space as it can. All right. Then we'll have a hidden class. This is when we want to hide certain things, like after you log in, you want to hide the login button, things like that. So this is going to be uh, display none. And then um, I've got one, I'm kind of interested in my notes here, uh, a margin bottom of two. So I'm just gonna do a margin, margin bottom uh, 20 pixels. This is just gonna be something that we use to give it a little, little bit of spacing for things. And the last thing here, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy these in because I feel like this video is getting a little bit long, uh, are just a couple of ta text classes that we'll copy in. So primary text is just gonna set the color to primary, secondary, set it to secondary, light, sets it to light, center, aligns at center, and then we're gonna go ahead and define our H1 as uh, 48 pixels and a font weight of 300. Now, these are, these are all kind of classes that I use in a lot of my from scratch examples, so I figured I would just kind of lay them out here up front, and then as we use them, I'll kind of allude to, again, what they do and, and what they're used for. But these are, uh, for, for the simple demos that I do, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the variables, the resets, the helper uh, function or utility or helper classes is really what that should be. Helper classes and then things to work with text. This is something that I use a lot, so it gives you kind of a standard thing, kind of, to start with for things that you just end up reusing a lot. So this is going to do it for this video. Again, we've got uh, we've got the structure of our HTML laid out, where we've got, uh, let's see, our header up here with a H1 and a, a little uh, message underneath. The main content is gonna have two sections, one for login, one for chat. We will hide one or the other, depending on if the user is already logged in, and then show the other one, depending on if the user is already logged in. And then we've stubbed out here, we've got our message list, we've got a, a message right and a message left just for demo purposes for now. And then we've got our message form at the bottom. So that's it for basically all the structure. And in this next video, we're gonna start building out and actually kind of styling uh, the, the core features of this application before we dive into JavaScript later on and then into Node as a backend and Socket.io and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next video.